Hallucinations are one of the biggest problems with modern language models. But why exactly they hallucinate and is it possible to mitigate those? I think we finally have an answer. So there is a very interesting paper from OpenAI titled Why Language Models Hallucinate. They argue that the main reason of hallucinations is how we train and evaluate these language models. So in here they say hallucinations need not be mysterious. They originate simply as errors in binary classification. If incorrect statements can't be distinguished from facts, then hallucinations in pre-trained language models will arise through natural statistical pressures. Now, don't worry if this does not make sense. I'm going to break it down and we're going to see why this exactly happens. For this, we'll first need to understand how language model works. So commonly, we say that language models are next word predictors, but I would argue they are a lot more than that. So here's a very quick demo that I put together with help of uh, Claude. Now, there are usually two steps. One is pre-training and the other one is post-training. We have a massive text data set. We pass this through a large language model and it will recognize patterns in the data. And based on the distribution of tokens, it's going to make next word prediction. But I would argue it does a lot more. So for example, if you were to ask something like this, in Paris, the capital of France, the primary language spoken is, the prediction should be French if you have a pre-trained model. But in order to make that prediction, it's not only just looking at the distribution of words. The model needs to understand grammar. Also, it needs to be able to have long distance context through self-attention. So for example, it needs to keep track of Paris, uh, its relationship to France, and then the language the user is asking about. Also, it needs to have word knowledge, so it needs to know that Paris is in France, and then French is the primary spoken language in there. And then it also should be able to uh, filter any distractors in the language. Now, having said that, it still needs to predict the next word. So it will come up with a probability distribution of what the next word prediction should look like. And that's where the main issue comes into play. So even if the model does not have knowledge about a certain topic, it's going to pick a word based on the distribution that it has seen. So sometimes you're going to see that the model will generate answers which are incorrect, but it's extremely confident in those answers. And that's where hallucinations come from. Their main argument is that hallucinations persist because the evaluation mechanism that is used today encourages generating answers rather than abstinence. So in here they say hallucinations persist partly because current evaluation methods set the wrong incentives. While evaluations themselves do not directly cause hallucinations, most evaluations measure model performance in a way that encourages guessing rather than honesty about uncertainty. So in most training paradigms, we use cross entropy, which is the negative log of the probability of correct prediction. So essentially, you can convert this into a binary classification problem. As a result, either the model can correctly predict the next token or incorrectly predict the next token. Now, the model doesn't really have another option, and that's why it incentivizes just guessing. So here they say, if you do not know the answer, but take a wild guess, you might get lucky and be right. Leaving it blank guarantees a zero. In the same way, when models are graded only on accuracy, the percentage of questions they get exactly right, they are encouraged to guess rather than say, I don't know. Now, that's where we need to have a different type of evaluation when we are training these models. So they argue that for questions where there is a single right answer, one can consider three categories of responses. One is going to be accurate responses, the second will be errors, and third is abstinence, where the model does not hazard a guess. Now, in order to incentivize abstinence, you will have to change the reward function. And OpenAI is working on models where, uh, rather than just generating an answer, the model is encouraged more to ask uh, clarifying or follow-up questions. Now, GPT-5 compared to the previous versions have drastically lower hallucination rates. And in some cases, uh, 
it's less than 1%, but still hallucinations do occur. They also argue that apart from uh, training, the evaluations on benchmarks also incentivize hallucinations. So they say, the accuracy on the scoreboards dominate leaderboards and model cards, motivating developers to build models that guess rather than hold back. And accuracy being just binary classification, where the model is encouraged to guess rather than get a zero on a question. Uh, that is one reason why, even as the models get more advanced, they can still hallucinate, confidently giving wrong answers instead of acknowledging uncertainty. So we will have actually need to change the way we uh, do our benchmarking as well. So there are two different components uh, if we want to reduce hallucination. First, when it comes to training, we need to change uh, the reward function for training mechanisms. And in the second part, we also need to work on the leaderboards or scoreboards when we are comparing different models. So here they say, penalizing confident errors more than you penalize uncertainty and give partial credit for appropriate expression of uncertainty. This idea is not new. Some standardized tests have long used variation of negative marking for wrong answers or partial credit for leaving questions blanks to discourage blind guessings. We will have to come up with a very similar mechanism for LLMs as well. But that's more on the training side. Then they talk about uh, it's not enough to add a few new uncertainty aware tests on the side. The widely used accuracy based evals need to be updated so that their scoring discourages guessing. If the main scoreboards keep rewarding lucky guesses, models will keep learning to guess. In fact, they mean that the model creators are going to uh, make the models so that they keep guessing. Now, fixing scoreboards can broaden adoption of hallucination reduction techniques, both newly developed and those from prior research. Next, we're going to look at some interesting observations from their paper. Uh, so the first one is claim hallucinations will be eliminated by improving accuracy because a 100% accurate model never hallucinates. That is not correct. So they say accuracy will never reach 100% because regardless of the model size, search and reasoning capabilities, some real world questions are inherently unanswerable. And if you're trying to achieve 100% accuracy, they argue that you are incentivizing hallucinations. The second claim is hallucinations are inevitable. Uh, they say they're not because language models can abstain when uncertain and we can train them so that they actually say, I don't know, rather than trying to guess answers. The next one is avoiding hallucinations uh, require a degree of intelligence which is exclusively available to larger models. But they argue that that may not be the case. Smaller models may actually know their limits. So for example, uh, their uh, specific example is if asked if um, uh, the model is asked about a topic that the model does not know, the smaller model can actually uh, say that it doesn't know based on um, it's limited knowledge, but if a larger model with more intelligence has knowledge of that topic, uh, but not to the extent to which it can answer the question, it may not be able to figure out the confidence level and could still hallucinate. The next claim is hallucinations are a mysterious glitch in the modern language models. Their argument is we understand the statistical mechanism through which hallucinations arise and are rewarded in evaluations. So we know why they occur, and we also know the mechanisms uh, in order to address them. And then to merge a hallucination, we just need a good hallucination evolve. So hallucination evolves have been published. However, a good hallucination evolve has little effect against hundreds of traditional accuracy-based uh, evolves that penalize humility and reward guessing. So instead, all of the primary eval metrics needs to be reworked to reward expression of uncertainty. And that is kind of the main takeaway. If we just rely on accuracy based uh, metrics for evaluation of these large language models, we may never be able to uh, eliminate hallucinations. Let me know what you think about the topic. I am personally really interested in understanding large language models, how they work, 
and why these interesting phenomena happen. Do let me know if you uh, are finding this format useful. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.